So Megan, uh, one thing that uh, the staff always uh, give me feedback is that uh, it matters a lot if, um, if we are doing a case with well-trained staff or if we have uh, the clinical expertise from someone from Abbott uh, available. Could you guide um, everyone on, on the journey on how to make the lab more efficient uh, in day-to-day, -day, like some tips and tricks and what are the needs in terms of uh, training for the staff? So I think that's a great question and I've actually prepared um, some different videos for viewing that we'll cut to in a minute that show how we prep the device and how we set up the different types of OCT systems. But what I'd like to also understand a little bit more is from your perspective, what are things uh, that would be helpful to a physician looking to assist in incorporating efficiency into their cath lab with OCT procedures? We both know that uh, time is a valuable asset within the cath lab and, and people start getting anxious very fast if things are not moving as they perceive in an efficient manner, right? So some, some tips to my colleagues is, is, is really um, if you uh, decide that there is an intervention uh, that is to, to happen on the next uh, minutes, you finish your diagnose, call for the OCT at the same time that you are calling for the heparin, mm -hmm. right? So don't wait for the wire to be down and call for the OCT because then things are, are happening in parallel. Uh, uh, you're going to show everyone how to do the connections properly, how to to, to streamline things, but the physician should call for the OCT and, uh, at the early phase, so, so, so the staff has time to prepare everything, right? I also believe that uh, it's really key uh, to work with uh, your industry partner to educate your staff at the best, and it's a constant uh, um, process. Um, one thing that uh, I found valuable is, is to create some uh, staff that are more passionate and engaged with the technology to, to be uh, uh, the hub that perpetuate and continue to, to train their peers. Uh, another tip is that uh, although the physician is not going to be necessarily the one entering the patient name or, or doing all the, the setup, it's important for him or her to know all these steps because they can be the educator for their own staff, right? So you're gonna uh, go over like the details on how can we acquire the first pullback and you're gonna tell everybody that uh, you actually don't need to fill all the, the fields, right? So what are the minimum requirements to actually go ahead and, and do your first pullback? So when we're setting up for an OCT case, in order to have it be as efficient as possible, the first thing we wanna do when the operator calls for OCT is focus on what the table needs. That's gonna require two action items. The first is grabbing your OCT box with your Dragonfly Opstar catheter. That box, again, has your catheter, your prep syringe, and your dock drape. The other thing that we're going to need to do is the table side controller. Some labs keep their table side controller mounted on the table at all times. Other labs, the table side controller will need to be connected to the table, ideally in close proximity to the physician um, and in his working space. Once our table side con controller is connected, we're going to want to prep what comes in our OCT box. You're going to take your prep syringe that hooks to the side port and it's going to be filled with 100% nice clean contrast, making sure we don't have any bubbles. And we're going to want to hook that to the side port of this catheter. Now because the contrast is so thick and the lumen of the OCT catheter is small, it will take some time for the fluid to reach the end of the catheter. One option is to unhoop the catheter here. And what we will look for is for the fluid, the contrast fluid, through the body of the catheter and we'll look for three to four drips out of the end. 
As we prep here, make sure to take your time and there's no need to be forceful with the fluid as it can risk damaging the lens of the catheter. Okay. As you see here, now we start to have the drips coming out of the end of our catheter and we look for three to four. Once we have those complete, we know that the catheter is prepped and ready to be handed off to the physician. So once your catheter is prepped, we can go ahead and drape the sterile dock. You'll unfold your dock from the wrapping, and what you're gonna to wanna to do is this open portion of the bag is going to face you, and the portion where it says insert dock here is going to face whoever is outside of the sterile field handing the dock off to you. The other thing we wanna do is make sure that all of this plastic is on either side of the top of our hands. It's very common to only want to go into the first layer of the material. You want to have all of that material on either side of your hands, and that's going to allow you to open up the bag like this and make a wide opening for the individual who's passing the dock off to you. Once the dock is in the bag, you want to make sure that you firmly grip and hold the dock while the circulator grabs the outside of the drape and pulls it over the cord and off of the sterile field. Once your OCT run is completed, best practice would recommend that you re-hoop your catheter, leaving it on the table. You can leave your catheter connected to the dock during this time, and you can safely store it at the end of your table. Once your catheter is rehooped, no matter how long it's been since going back into the body, what you're gonna wanna make sure that you do is you re-purge and re-prep that catheter. Again, just looking for three to four drips coming out of the end, making sure that no contrast has built up within the lumen of the catheter. Now that you've set up everything you need at the table, we're gonna talk about how we ensure that your OCT systems are ready to go. Integrated systems are quite simple. They should be shut down at the end of every day and rebooted in the morning after the x-ray system has been fully booted. With an OCT mobile cart, there are a few more steps that need to be taken before image acquisition can be started. Before powering on or plugging in your OCT mobile system, it is very important that we plug in both your angio and your video cables to the back of the cart. You also wanna ensure that your table side control has power. And at that point, when those items are done, you're ready to go ahead and plug in the power cord and power on your OCT mobile cart system. Plugging in your co-registration and your video cables to the back of the cart prior to powering up the system allows for the OCT system to interact appropriately with the live angio feed coming from the x-ray system, ensuring that you have good co-registration. Once the system is powered up, the software is gonna walk you through a series of prompts. The first prompt on a mobile system is going to ask you to select a room. When you select your room, ensure that the icons of the C-arm and the Bluetooth are white, indicating that they are active and ready for use. If you're using an integrated system, the first prompt you'll receive from the software is asking you to begin your OCT case. Once you select begin a case, the system will prompt you to add your patient and select your physician. So one of the benefits of Ultrion 2.0 is that each physician can have a custom profile. When you get to the select physician screen, indicate which physician you're working with. Once their name is selected, the software will automatically default to their preferred settings as they move into the case. After you've selected your physician, the final step prior to image acquisition is indicating on the screen the vessel and location of the lesion in which you'll be imaging. When the case is complete, it will be time to eject the OCT catheter from the dock. It's very important that the eject button on the dock is pressed and the catheter is not removed until the indicator light with the lock is finished blinking and off completely. At that point, a gentle quarter turn can be given to the catheter and it should disengage easily without resistance. One thing to note is we do not want to eject the catheter from the dock during the case as this will break the sterile field. We've covered a lot of steps in the setup process, but what I wanna do is also give you some tips and tricks that I've learned from my time in the field and working with Dr. Bezerra to ensure that you can incorporate this setup quickly and efficiently into your cath lab. 
So the first tip I'm gonna give you is about the table side controller. The table side controller as a staff member or a physician is your best friend. As a physician, it lets you operate the software independently. And as a member of the team in the room, it allows you to attend to other patient needs while the physician accomplishes what he needs from an OCT perspective. Sometimes with mobile systems and busy labs, table side controllers can wander off, end up in the wrong room. Maybe we didn't set it up in the right order. A multitude of things can happen. Regardless of what happened to the table side controller, if you're ever in a position where you need to use one quickly, you can always borrow from another room. And what you do is you remove the brick from the end of the power cord and you can plug it directly into the USB port on the back of the mobile system. The next tip I'm gonna give you is in regards to patient information and inputting that patient information in the system. Some OCT systems are connected to a work list and you can automatically pull that in and it's very quick and efficient. If for some reason your OCT system is not connected to that work list, I'm gonna give you a trick that I use sometimes and that I'll teach teams that allow them to make the process a little bit more efficient on the front end. If you're in a situation where you need to get the OCT system up and running quickly and you don't quite have the time to put in all the important patient information, you at least need to put some characters in under the patient ID, patient first name, and patient last name. From there, go ahead and begin your case. Before the case is over, the patient information does need to be updated and complete. What you can do is at the end of the case, go to settings in the top right corner of the screen. From there, you can select patient data, find your patient that you're currently looking to edit, select their name, and hit the edit button. From there, you can correct any of the information that was maybe put in incorrectly at the beginning of the case or put in incompletely. This tip is just around overall workflow and setup in the cath lab with your OCT system. As Dr. Vizera has mentioned, the operator should call for the OCT system at the same time they're asking for heparin, angiomax, and the other items that they would typically request at the beginning of their case. What's most important is the table gets what they need first. Open the box with the OCT catheter, drop their equipment to them on the sterile field, and make sure your table side controller is set up. From there, if you have a mobile system, you'll proceed with the hookup steps that we talked about for your angio and your video cabling before powering on. If you have an integrated system, the next step would simply just to be dropping the dock to the sterile scrub at the table when they're ready with that dock cover.